Apple lawyers smoke crack. Google and Apple are laying off. Pinterest goes mobile and more. Hello, everyone, and welcome to Tech and Coffee's Tech News Week. Today is Thursday, August 16th, and this is episode 9. I'm your host, Duke Carrico, and what a panel we have this week. Hello, everyone. How we doing? Fine, Duke. Great. Fine. All right, great. I'll tell you what, we're going to do something different tonight. Let's uh, just go down the line and let everyone introduce themselves, give your name, your location, anything else you'd like anyone to know. Uh, my name is Andrew Rowland. I'm uh, located in New Orleans, Louisiana. Okay, and I'm Bruce Turner, and I'm in Lynchburg, Virginia. <coughs> Glad to be here. I'm Daniel Kiago. I'm in Denmark, the only European in here. Oh, sorry, only Northern European in here, I should rather say. <laughs> um, my name's Guy Cook. I'm president of Vitamin Hosting Incorporated. We're a network and internet solutions company based in Washington State. Um, Jeff Zayas, I'm the only Californian in here, so there. Hmm. I'm Mark Stuckless. I'm an elementary school teacher here in Ontario, Canada, and I'm an open source activist, and I get pretty passionate about it. And I'm trying to pass the philosophy on to the next generation. I'm Matthew. I'm from France, and I'm studying web development. Hi, Jane. I'm coming to you from Tulsa, Oklahoma. I'm Russell, Russell Jones, coming to you from Lexington, Kentucky. Retired boatyard owner and mechanic. Very good. Very good. So, uh... Guys, let's talk a little bit about what's been going down in the tech news this week. Uh, uh, how many of you guys have been following uh, Apple versus Samsung? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I've heard about it. Okay. Yeah, I'll tell you what. Uh, a lot has come to light this week. You know, uh, first of all, we've seen some pretty impressive sales numbers. And uh, I, I pulled this off of The Verge, a great uh, tech website, by the way. But uh, it's looking like, uh, let's see, hold on here. Uh, I'm, I'm trying to see the fear. Okay, over 85 million iPhones have been sold in the U.S. up to the second quarter of this year. And... Uh, <laughs> brought revenue of over 50 billion they also moved 34 million iPads this is just American numbers so uh, you know uh, man what I could do with all those billions of dollars uh, but I think what's been more interesting is the banter that's been going back and forth uh, between the judge and uh, the Samsung lawyers and the Apple lawyers and uh, I know we were all talking before we went on air. Uh, the judge, uh, the judge accused the Apple lawyers of uh, smoking crack. <laughs> yeah, it's, seems she's getting a little testy. You know, the, the judge is really kind of getting fed up with both sides. It seems like. Well, uh, let, let me just throw this out just to the group. Uh, no one in particular. Uh, who's sick of hearing about these lawsuits between uh, Apple and Samsung? Oh, right. oh yeah. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Well, well, let me ask you this. You know, uh, there's always the court of public opinion. Uh, Bruce, who do you think currently is winning that uh, court of public opinion? Well, it's it's you know it's really hard to tell. You you know because you were in the show. I was in a, another show Sunday Sunday morning, and we had some uh, quote Apple fanboys. And I have an iPhone, you know, so I'm not I'm not anti Apple or anything else like that. But uh, you know, really, almost describing this thing as a kind of a winner-take-all cage match. You know, they were they were really doing a lot of trash talking about how these Apple lawyers were going to just fry these Samsung lawyers and you know tear them up and turn them inside out and stuff like that. I don't know that I can really really tell right now, but um, uh, you know, I think obviously the people who are extremely pro Apple call them fanboys or whatever else. I mean, they're they're obviously bullish on Apple winning. Uh, then you have the the more open source community like Mark uh, represents and, and and some of us uh, 
are uh, are very much open to, um, you know, hoping that um, that there's a fair trial, and uh, and that the judge will make an honest decision. There's, you know, what's going to happen no matter what the decision the judge makes. Let's say the judge decides for Samsung, all the Apple people are going to cry foul and say that the judge was smoking crack. You know what I'm saying? So, um, you know, it, it's really hard to say right now. I mean, you know, I hope she I hope she lets them present what they need to present, and uh, you know. Yeah, maybe it'll just be there are no winners, you know. Mm -hmm. and it's that no one is infringing on each other's, you know, um, copyrights or patents, and and basically you can't you can't uh, legislate or um, different the look and feel of something versus the technical aspects of it. So maybe that would be the ruling. That would be the great thing if it was. Yeah, the big question well, is damages. Well, that's, that's what they're what looking, looking for, for, right? Is damages. Yeah. They're looking for billions in in damages, and uh, you know who knows whether a jury's going to give that to them or not. So, well, you know, uh, Samsung here again. I mean, don't uh, these, these are Samsung's claims, but uh, Samsung's claiming that uh, what Apple's contesting is uh, worth a little over five hundred million, and Samsung itself is asking. For four hundred and twenty-one point eight million uh, in patents that it claims that it owns that Apple's violating, so you know how that works. I mean, but uh, you know, really, uh, you know, I, I mean, just what I was thinking. If you took that at face value, you're not that far off, and it wouldn't surprise me one bit if uh, there's not a deal made before a jur jury makes some sort of decision. Any other comments? Well, I was just going to say, I hope that, um, you know, obviously I, I'm pro open source, I'm pro Android, uh, uses a Linux kernel, that whole thing. So I'm hoping that what happens is the judge brings some common sense into all this. And, um, you know, I definitely do not want to see an Apple victory. Uh, if we end up with something where both sides claim victory, I still think that that'll end up helping the open source community because Apple will not get all that they want. But if they win this thing outright, I'm really concerned it's going to really stifle innovation across the board. Um, you know, and that's that's my fear. Yeah, I, I think a lot of people share your fear. I do, Mark. Well, it looks like they're going to stack up their patents and measure them up. And, uh, you know, I think that's why, you know, other folks have gotten patented up. You know, that's why Google went out and bought some patents, uh, some portfolios of patents. So everybody can kind of stack them up, and then I think once they go and battle out in court, spend a bunch of money, get billed real heavy for all the for all the court fees, then uh, and then it becomes a wash, and maybe everything will settle out, and we'll sort of have a balance of power, you know. You know, you know who's really winning here uh, is the lawyers. <laughs> for sure. Yep. Yeah, but the, the but the losers are going to be the community. You know, well, the the that's very, that's very, very true. Okay. Any other comments on the trial? Okay. Let's move on then. Uh, you know, uh, we got word this week that Google was going to lay off 20% of the workforce of Motorola. You know, uh, granted, a lot of these jobs were overseas jobs, but it's still 20% of Motorola. And uh, they're doing it to where the workforce can focus on a few good phones and, and start to build some high-end phones. And uh, uh, the first question that came across my mind, Matt, do you think that uh, the next Google Nexus will be on a Motorola hardware? Oh, it's hard to say. I would have said, yeah, not long ago, but... Uh you know what are what are their real intentions for Motorola? You know, I mean, we just mentioned uh, uh, the patents that they bought from Motorola being a big interest in purchase. Mm -hmm. uh, is the hardware company a major interest of theirs, or is that just something to kind of a? Uh, are they more worried about holding the patents and and, and getting the job done for their flagship phones that are going to run their operating system? I don't know that they're that beholden to the hardware company. Uh, but you know, uh, we'll see. I mean, if they don't have to wheel and deal with anybody else, why would they? You know. If they can make this work and it can be the phone that can be the flagship for them, I don't see why they wouldn't do that. Yeah, I think that um, you know they're going to look at the numbers, right? They're just going to look at the numbers and say, okay, like they're you know the Razer phones were you know a great product by them. We're going to keep them in the lineup. We're going to improve on them. 
Um, you know, so I think it, it, it makes it doesn't make sense to close down a successful line, right? It just quick, it doesn't make sense. Quick show of hands, who who on the panel right now are using uh, Motorola devices? I've got one. It's a Motorola backflip that I won in a Facebook contest, and uh, <laughs> I just rooted it, and I'm having some issues getting the radio to work. Um, I put the CM7 on it. But anyway, it's going to my uh, soon-to-be 13-year-old. Uh, you know, it's a pretty crappy device, no offense, I mean, compared to what we have now with like the S3 and stuff like that. Um, so I personally think that this is a smart move that Motorola, I mean, that Google's doing, uh, you know, with Motorola is, you know, cut the things that aren't working well, get the company refocused. I think Google has a good track record of if something's not going in the right direction, you know, let's move it or let's change it or let's pare it down to what's really important. Let's help it focus. And, you know, they're always learning from what they do. Even think about Buzz and, and other Wave and other things that they've done, which they then, you know, the best of that gets put into something else, um, whether it's the Google Plus or whatever. And I think hopefully that same kind of philosophy is coming to Motorola. And I think some of the cuts are probably maybe overdue. Yeah. Uh, I think it's a good idea to focus on a couple of flagship products, definitely. Yeah, me too. Exactly. They, they've had too many just off weird phones and adapted phones for different networks. They need to just let the come to them and push that they're doing what the consumers want by doing that, you know. Uh, the, the backflip, for instance, is a crappy phone compared to about any phone. Uh, that's a smart Yeah, phone. I know that's that's a pretty dated example, but well, it's just I know. something I've worked with recently. But um, Even still, yeah. it's not, it wasn't a great phone. There were great other phones at the time. Yeah. That you, know, you know the cool thing about that backflip? <laughs> was, was Mark Mark brought he he brought home that backflip running Android 1.5, and and rooted it and put Sanogen mod on it. Yeah, maybe maybe it's not working, but yeah, man, I still think. That's <laughs> <laughs> well, I think it's down to a new SIM card, and hopefully we'll be back in business. Yeah, yeah. But anyway, it kind of tarnished uh, that experience with the backflip for me. Kind of tarnished Motorola's image a bit. And I think, um, you know, maybe they have tried to do too much and try to have some low-end stuff and some higher-end stuff, and, and maybe they just really do need to focus uh, on, you know, the stuff that the products that people are going to want. And, well, um, I, I, owned a, I owned a Motorola Atrix, and, uh, you know, it was a cool little phone, a little four-inch screen. It was cool. And, and you know, the add-ons had the potential to really take Android in places it had never been, but it was... Uh, uh, the way that AT&T priced those accessories, you know, like that keyboard dock and all, uh, I mean, listen, I could have bought a, a, an Intel branded uh, Windows PC for what it was going to cost me to, uh, you know, with the with the Atrix and the keyboard accessory. You know, I mean, that's that's crazy, guys. You know, I I, I kind of go I go back to the idea that Motorola is, is still a strong brand in the market. And you just don't kill off a brand, you know. You you're going to try to strengthen it by focusing where they should be. So you know, I think they sh I think they're going to keep the phones, but they're going to keep the high end phones. You know, the ones that actually make uh, mobile uh, a wonderful experience. Mm -hmm. Strong brand. They've got about as they've got as good a hardware as anybody does uh, exactly. when it comes to their higher end side of things. They need to back off things like Moto Blur, and I think you know everybody else with their you know, touch whiz and whatnot, all these skins they're putting over uh, Android. They need to back off with weighting stuff down with that. They need to back off with, with all of their, uh, you know, uh, and, and I think this is probably more the carriers, I guess, where you're having the, the uh, deals where you have, uh, you know, uh, hard-loaded apps and stuff that you can't take off of there, you know, that come with the phone and weigh it down with stuff that's not necessary. And, and this stuff uh, actually, you know, kills real-life performance, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, now, Moto Blur has gotten better, I will say that, from where it was. It's lightened up. It works better. It's a little less intrusive. Things feel a little bit more like stock Android. Um, but uh, they, I think they're moving in the right direction. They need to lay off that stuff. Don't, don't spend a lot of money on development for the user interface because it's happening more crowdsourced, more organically now. They don't need to be uh, focusing on that kind of thing. Do you think, uh, I, 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 this kind of goes back to the first question I asked, but do you think that Google's going to really utilize Motorola in this way to kind of 
uh, in, intro their flagship devices. And if they do this, is this not kind of treading on uh, some sacred ground with HTC and Samsung and some others? I don't think so. I don't think there's any sacred ground. <laughs> That's the truth. It's who, whoever would have... Uh, been able to get a, a, a deal to do the flagship phone first does it and that's the way it's gone uh, you know and if, if it's their own company and they do it and somebody else will maybe compete with something and they'll raise the bar you know yeah. that reminds, reminds me of a great book title I saw one time sacred cows make great gourmet hamburgers so no I don't think so <laughs> <laughs> I think there's still a lot of opportunity for competition where we have competition problems is when it comes to the providers yeah I agree all right. Hey, while we're talking about Google, guys, uh, Google is uh, going to roll out some vanity URLs, and uh, you know I'm I'm not too keen on Facebook. You know, the, but the first day I could go out and get my name on Facebook, I ran out and got it. And uh, you can bet that I'll try and be the first one in line when I can do it on Google Plus. Uh, is this uh, is this a big deal for Google Plus, or is this just you know, another thing that Google Plus is doing, it doesn't really matter. Well, it's I'm just hoping that... <laughs> Go ahead, Guy. It's a huge deal. Um, companies like Toyota that are already on board with it as part of the um, premier launch of it uh, demonstrated to me that it's very important. And I've spent about two and a half days getting all of the companies I work with Google Plus page is verified through that verification process that Google has in place because I think those are the first people that will be enabled with these custom URLs. Yeah, I hope so, and I hope it'll be a reward for people who have come to this space early. Yeah, and folks that have ignored it will be the ones missing out. And I hope there's no employee at Google whose name is Bruce Turner. <laughs> <laughs> I think you know. I, I must admit, I, I'm kind of lucky. I have a unique name, so um, yeah. You, you know, can I just add one thing to that? I think um, I think if you see Facebook and others try to do something similar, then you'll know that it that it is something. It is a big deal because I think it's going to be the kind of thing that people are going to latch onto. Not just companies, individuals. You know, all of us are going to try to. To get our own vanity URL, and um, so I think I think if others, if Facebook, other people try to copy that kind of thing, um, but like Duke said, they're already there. You know, Facebook already has that that ID URL, and Twitter has it. Um, you know, it just makes sense that, that Google will be there. But I think the stakes are higher now for Google because uh, folks are looking uh, forward a lot more in uh, staking out their spaces in social media than they were. I think when those when those we're taking off. Yeah, I I think people are branding themselves just like companies brand themselves now. Oh, absolutely. Exactly. You know, so you know, anytime you can do that, do it because that's the name of the game. Good. All right, I've got another mobile story here, guys. Uh, Pinterest uh, this week has uh, released its Android app and released an iPad app. And uh, it already had an app, my understanding, for the, uh, for the iPhone. Uh, I, I think the real story here is not that they've released an app, but that, uh, uh, a, you know, listen, my wife is crazy about Pinterest. I've, I've watched her take a Facebook addiction and really replace it with Pinterest. And, uh, and I've asked her why she likes Pinterest so well. And... Uh, uh, do you, I guess uh, with with the launching of these apps, uh, goodness, I'm going to put someone on the spot here. Uh, Andrew, Andrew, do you see Pinterest as uh, uh, basically going to outpace Google Plus and leave Google Plus in the dust? I think it's a different space, right? Uh, I think Pinterest as a whole is a different space. Uh, Google Plus is visual. Uh, like Pinterest might be, but outpaced by users, probably. I mean, at this point, I would I would say yes, uh, but I don't know about out quality, right? So a lot of the stuff that's getting put on Pinterest is really not quality. It seems like a lot of it's you know 
click throughs and and so on. It's it's almost turning into a spam social network over the last you know uh, few months. It seems like. Uh, my my wife uh, constantly. Uh, uh, I know you can't see me, but believe me, I've got a gut and. And my wife uh, is pulling recipes off Pinterest all the time, and yeah. I get them. That's the the collection aspect of Pinterest that is interesting and uh, that people uh, care about. Uh, with Google Plus, uh, it's um, mostly uh, blogging and uh, news. Uh, Pinterest is more for what you want to uh, conserve uh, in, uh, on the um, on, in the length of time. Uh, if you want to pin something uh, that stays for for long, you pin it and you collect it. You collect your your stuff, and um, and uh, you can uh, you can bookmark uh, all the the activities you do like. Um, I think they are Google Plus and Pinterest are two really different products. Mm -hmm. I agree. Uh, a show of hands who has a, a Pinterest account and keep them up all right now then now then who has who actively uses their Pinterest account sometimes yeah <laughs> okay uh, now guy how do you utilize Pinterest <clears throat> Um, I held up two fingers because I have two accounts. One is for an ad agency near Seattle, Washington, and we um, pin up things that are relevant to their customer base, um, primarily uh, marketing tips, those type of things. The other one is the account I have under my moniker of Uncle Guy, and there I put up what I like to be involved with. Those relate to uh, content management systems, engagement tools, uh, Facebook resources, uh, the Droid apps that I find, my local community of just for kids app things that relate to my community and that kind of is, is the extent of my involvement. I use it about every day, Duke. It, 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 one of those two accounts gets, gets a pin a day. Okay. And do you get a lot of engagement on that? Do people go to it? Um, yes, I do. I, I kind of marvel at the fact that, that the community picks it up. And I, and I, re, um, I build bridges between the Pinterest and a blog or between Pinterest and a Facebook post and kind of complement each other that way. And, and I think that increases the engagement level. Okay. And I don't have the magic formula yet, but I will. I'm shocked at how much engagement Pinterest has. I'm not really into Pinterest, but I use it a little bit. And every time I post something, I get reshares from people I don't know. I get activity. Um, it's really hot. There's a lot going on there right now. But a lot of brands are figuring it out quickly. And a lot of like big marketing folks are starting to move into Pinterest space, take advantage of really long pin boards and stuff that take up a lot of space and start doing a lot of spamming. And so I just wonder what the quality of the space is going to be as uh, as all the uh, marketing folks jump on it. Great. For a lot of people, it's nice to have their space, uh, their own space, where they can pin what they like and what they want to show. That's uh, for the for everyday people. That's important to to be able to do that. Yeah, I mean, when my wife first discovered it, uh, you know, way back in beta, beta stage she she loved it because she was downloading like gigabytes a week of photos to her computer you know of stuff and she was basically doing Pinterest on her computer right so she was just throwing them into folders and then like could just go through the folder and view it and like Pinterest like revolutionized that for her and you know she you know she was an early adapt adopter so she's got a huge following on there if she ever po posts anything like for our blog you can see a spike like that and her blog goes up mm. So, it, it works for a lot of people. I mean, I'm just afraid that, you know, as I view it, I see a lot of stuff that I would consider spam on there, right? Maybe it's yeah, the maybe, like, yeah. maybe the people I'm following, too, so. For me, it's just a bit of an overload still, just the way it comes at you like a tornado, you know, of just tons of yeah. uh, pictures and pins, and, I mean, 
uh, it just doesn't work for me like that. I mean, maybe it's a different kind of brain that likes to look at everything all scattered out like that. Sometimes I do if I'm focused. Like, if it's high quality. I do like that format, but. You know, maybe I'm just maybe I'm just not a very good user. The way I follow people and the way I'm selective about boards, I just to me it's a big fire hose, and it's really hard for me to keep up with it and to uh, grab a hold of things that that I like and and uh, just keep focus with it. You know, yeah. for I, me, it's I think a, that's one of the things that works. Excuse me, Bruce. One of the things that works is to use hashtags mm -hmm. when you post. And so, if you're posting about WordPress. Be sure you reference that. Put it on a board called WordPress, and then people that are looking for that niche, that environment, will find your uh, information a lot quicker, and you can build that community of WordPress users that much faster. Yeah, for me, it's a matter of margin. I, I can see somebody like Guy and other people who, within their context of their work, are leveraging uh, the power of Pinterest for you know to gain engagement and stuff like that. But when when you stop to think about it, you know there there there's Twitter, there's Facebook, there's Google Plus, now there's Pinterest. I mean, how much time do you have ultimately that you can spend here? And uh, my concern for for myself is whiling away the hours, and uh, and forgetting the importance of living locally. You know, with my family and friends here and th and that sort of thing. So uh, I don't I don't use Pinterest. I did sign up for it. I have an account. I haven't used it uh, in a long time. I did take a look see at it, and I'm and and I I looked at it recently because I knew this was going to be a topic of the show, but um, I just simply don't have the margin in my schedule in life to incorporate another social media type thing. But I can see it as a great tool for those who who can use it that way. Mm -hmm. And and uh, I, I'm just going to say this, uh, just just to kind of uh, reinforce everything that you just said. Uh, here a couple of weeks ago, uh, my wife and I, we were we were driving somewhere, and, and she looked at me and she said, how come you never post anything to Pinterest? And I was able to, to just to glance right back at her and say, how come you never post anything to Google Plus? <laughs> there you go. So, <laughs> I'll tell you what, let's, let's move on. Uh, let's, let's talk about Facebook shares here, guys. Uh, this is something that, that Daniel just uh, turned me on to just before showtime, and uh, I definitely think it's worth discussion across this group. Uh, Facebook closed today at uh, 1969, and uh, they opened, when they went public, uh, the initial opening was uh, $38. That's 48%. That Facebook uh, has lost value-wise. So uh, I'll tell you what, Daniel. Since you gave me this, what do you think of that? Well, I, th I think perhaps it, there was a lot. Of, there was a lot of hype about Facebook, the their launch uh, on the. Uh, it's, it was Nasdaq, right? Yes. Yeah, uh, I I saw it that morning. All all the TV channels basically were talking about it, and well, they they didn't. Facebook haven't grown a lot in this period. They they should perhaps. It seems like they're at the top now, and, and they they shouldn't go public once they're at the top. They should go public once they're developing instead, because now they're just losing value, and now they they've issued even more stocks. So now the uh, the value will fall even more. Mm -hmm. right. yeah, I'm sorry. Go I was going to say not only that. Um, I think now the the employees can start selling the stock. Mm -hmm. that we're, um, so mm -hmm. there'll be more stock. You know, I can tell you, at my age, sell 19, side than buy side. 1969 was a great year, as I recall, but it's not a good <laughs> stock <laughs> price. <laughs> uh, you know, I I got curious when. Uh, when when Daniel told me about this, and I went and looked, I, I got got curious, and I went out and looked. And uh, uh, Ford Motor Company, uh, they they uh, finished up ten cents today. They're still under ten dollars. Okay. Then I went and looked at GM, and GM uh, they they finished the day just below thirty dollars. And Ford and GM make something. Okay, they actually make a product that gets shipped out their doors all over the United States. That, that's a product. Uh, I think we lost Duke. Is that a possibility? Yeah, it seems like we did. So, yes. Frozen. We'll see what happens. <laughs> we'll keep looking yeah. at that on it air. Still, it still says we're yeah. on here. Yeah. 
and he's uh, yeah. and he's he's got a good point about the uh, the product going out the door. Oh, he's back. Ah, I made it back. Yeah, I I was ju- I just wanted to say that uh, uh, the these companies actually make a product, and and Facebook just has a lot of people. So I just want to get the group's comments on that. Well, I, you know, when you think about it, um, Google doesn't the revenue doesn't make a product. Right, they they sell advertising, so they don't really make a product. So um, you know, Facebook can have that model as well. Yahoo doesn't make a product. If but Apple, if Google, Apple makes a product, but but if Google got search, yeah, but I'm but the company itself, right, doesn't make a product except you know as add-ons. Oh, okay. Yeah, I, I see. Right? Well, they so, provide a service, right? They provide a service to, to an ad company, basically, is what. Google well, that's is. what, but that's what Facebook wants. To do, I, th- right? I think the thing is, Google be, be, Google Facebook, knew they were an ad company pretty pretty early. But, but Facebook knew that they were going into that arena. That's why they were valued so high because of that, the number of users and the the, the reach potential. Yeah, so, but I mean, obviously, they were overvalued as well, right? Exactly. Yeah. So. I mean, do and it you, goes do, right back to what Daniel said: too much hype. Yeah. At what point? At I, what point are they ever going to reach that point again? I don't and, think so. And, and if you have no development in in your business, the, 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 it's basically stood still since they went public. There's been no, nothing major to increase number of users or to to in, increase user time. And well, they're getting a lot of competition among others from Google Plus and Pinterest. Well, yeah, they don't have they don't have development for the user. They have development for the ad agencies and the people that have stock yeah. in them now. The development, everything I've seen is all kinds of new, you know, new ways to advertise on their site, right? And yeah. that that's a problem, I think. So, but they they, built, they they have built an infrastructure to support it, right? Right. You know, yeah, they have right. done some really smart things. Like you can Indeed. you can log in through your uh, other people through your Facebook account. You have you know companies that allow um, you know like us on Facebook. So you know there's a lot of things that they have done that um, that they kind of built the house, the foundation. But now they just need to make sure that um, you know they are um, profitable. Can, can I just add something here? I vote with my feet. When I don't like a company or their product or their service, I stop using it. And I have basically, my Facebook account is dormant. And I've, I've moved fully into Google Plus because I like it. It's, it's got more control. And I think it's a better product, in my opinion, for what I want to do. Um, and for other people, we'll continue with Facebook. But I do believe that they're going to start to have people vote with their feet. And some people are going to leave it behind. And already it's come out that a lot of these accounts are fictitious or people are making something for their dog. You know, I, I think there's a lot, of, a lot of hype, a lot of inflated things. And a lot of people that bought the stock were people that didn't really understand technology. It's like, hey, let's get in on this Facebook thing, you know. Um, yeah, but, Google but like, is Google's a company that I wish I would have bought at the IPO. I wish I would have bought stuff when it first went, first came out. I just wasn't in a financial state to do it. Um, and I think you know their track record would have proved that to be a good venture. But I don't feel the same about Facebook at all. I, I Facebook is a giant in uh, on the web because. Uh, when you think about all these people and all of these uh, enterprises that, that are adver- advertising on, uh, on Facebook, that's impressive. Uh, I mean, every newspaper are, are on it. Um, with the new open graph, it opens some, uh, some new possibilities for applications. So uh, they still get, Facebook still gets some value. Uh, and um, for a lot of people, that's, uh, that's uh, a lot of relationship. A lot of uh, of, uh, of this kind of thing, and um, I, for the the waste of uh, of money in the in the in the IPO, um, maybe uh, it will uh, it will come back up, but uh, it need to find uh, it needs to find its uh, its level uh, uh, just right. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I actually agree. I don't think they're in trouble. No. No, I don't. I don't. I, in fact, I'll be honest with you. I just, uh, I, I, I really do. Uh, I, I, 
I hate to say this, but I think they're too big to fail. I mean, I, I think they've got the numbers yeah. there, and 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 uh, you, I, I've said this before. You know, ten years ago, uh, people when they logged on to AOL, they thought they were on the internet. Yeah. And that's a lot of people today, when they log on to Facebook, that is the Internet to a lot of people. That's true. True. Okay. Anything else on Facebook? I also think there's going to be a lot of people that are going to migrate to uh, newer things that are coming out like this. Um, what was the new service you just talked about? Pinterest. 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 Right. And Google Plus. People are going to migrate yeah. away. The newer things. So I don't really think Facebook's going to hold. Okay. That's just my opinion. People are going for newer okay. things all the time. Yeah, I keep thinking about MySpace. Remember when MySpace was the lion in the jungle? That was it. I mean, you had to be there. And now if you say MySpace, they go, who? Who? Oh. All right. So yeah. let's wait and see. Let's, you know, we'll revisit this in a year from now. Yeah, I you know I don't know if stock is an indication of you know the value of the company. Yeah, you know, it's a perception. It's a, well, it's a perception. Stock is a valuation by by perception. Okay. I, still, yeah, I think it, I think it needs to to find its its place uh, in the in the in the world of finance. And uh, and really uh, get its its value. What what really Facebook is about about advertising, about uh, communication, and uh, and that's it. It needs to find the the good value for it. Mm -hmm. Hold on, I'm I'm actually I'm looking up one thing. Yahoo stock. What what did that close at? And. Why don't you guys talk a second? I want to just want to. Uh, I just, that. I'm just going to add here. I think they've plateaued. I guess that's basically what I'm saying. I'm not saying that they're going to fail, but uh, yeah, I'm saying that the one. the ongoing increase and in more and more users and all that, like at some point, um, you know, that's going to level off, and they're still trying to figure out mobile. I mean, that's why they bought. Um, what was it? In Instagram. Instagram. Yeah, you know they they okay. want to have a, they want to have a presence there and. Um, I don't know. I just don't have a lot of uh, confidence in in them as a company. Not not that they're not big and they're not being successful in some areas and all that. Um, but I see Google as just okay. Let me, let me let me just ask this question. Yahoo stock is at fourteen ninety nine, and and what was um, Facebook nineteen? Yes. Yes. Nineteen sixty nine. Okay. What what company would you rather put your money in right now? Uh, yeah. Yahoo, Marissa Yahoo. Mayer. I, I, I really, I would put my money in Yahoo. I think things are changing there. I mean, I don't think that's a good example, but I understand what you're trying to get to, Jeff. But I have more trust in in someone coming like from Google to run a company than Mark Zuckerberg running Facebook, right? <laughs> Truthfully. So you so you say the infrastructure of Yahoo is in a better shape than the infrastructure of Facebook. I I believe that uh, that that's a loaded uh, question, right? So, no, I don't know. <laughs> no, I, I don't. I don't know it. that the infrastructure is, but they have a base that they can build off of that has more components. Their infrastructure, they have more places. They are. They're not just a social network. I mean, obviously, Facebook's not just a social network at this point either. But that is their main game, right? Google was search at first, right? And there's so much more now. Not saying Facebook can't be so much more, but they're going to have to be innovative. They're going to have to be innovative, and I don't know that they're going to be that innovative. Yeah, I was just I was just doing a quick little experiment, you know. And I just wanted to see where everyone kind of oh, fell okay. into it. I'm I'm glad you did that. Okay, I'll tell you what, we're moving on. Wait a minute, before we move on, I just want to do this right here. We've normally got two regulars that are here with us. Uh, George <laughs> in the UK at uh, Og Camp. And Joseph is in Korea, and uh, Hong oh Hong Kong, yes, thank you very much, Hong Kong. So yeah, just uh, just wanted to uh, pay a little homage to those guys there. Uh, we miss you guys. 
hope you're having fun, George. Uh, you haven't called needing bail money yet, and uh, <laughs> Joseph, I'm not even going to go anywhere with you. I'm just going to say, guys, have a good time. <laughs> but that picture is exactly what they're doing. George is drinking, and Joseph is eating. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so I'll tell you what, we're going to move into uh, another that's come a, become a regular segment of Tech News Week, and that is... Rumors. rumors. All right, guys, we're going to talk about some rumors here now, and, uh, uh, I've, the, you know, it's amazing how many Apple or iOS-related rumors are out there. But these are actually some pretty good ones this week. They're not just about the next iPhone. So thumbs in the neutral position. And uh, Apple reportedly is laying off significant numbers of retail employees. Okay, Bruce, you went down there. How come? Uh, how come you don't think that's true? Well, I mean, if you if you look at one of these articles, uh, each employee is generating about four hundred and twenty thousand dollars in sales every year. So, you know, the, uh, ostensibly, this rumor has to do with stores being profitable. What? They're profitable already, and why would they reduce employees when they're fixing to come out with another iPhone here shortly? And, uh, and and they're going to need people to handle that that business. So I I, I, I don't buy it. Okay. When you but, but when you compare revenue to people and you cut down on cut, you know, twenty percent of people, that means the revenue per person goes up even higher than what you said. So it'll be like yeah. six hundred thousand dollars per employee. So it looks it, even it better might, in the balance sheet. It might be a measure of of keep the good ones and the ones that are showing up for work. And getting their check and not worrying about commission and going home every week, let them go, and just get the people that excel in the um, field. Several are reporting this, and Business Insider is saying that they've they've got some new guy, this uh, Browett, and says that he's ordered Apple's retail stores to take several steps towards this goal of being more profitable, Bruce. I, I heard your sales figures, okay, on what each employee was doing, but this guy is uh, is saying that uh, uh, he's got this new goal, and they're going to do it by if you can't work part-time, you're not going to work here, and uh, they're eliminating overtime and no promotions, and basically what Business Insider is saying is that, uh, you know, they're, they're getting all these reports that this is happening and that Apple's a very greedy company. Well, it's an interesting quote also in this story that that $420,000 a year per employee is 10 times the amount of the employees at Best Buy. So maybe Best Buy ought to take note <laughs> and can some of their people. But, you know, if you heard what uh, Duke said, you know, working part-time, part-time means you don't have to carry the health care benefits, right, as mm -hmm, a full-time right. employee. So they're shaving operation costs, it sounds like, you know, and they're, they're working out a way to do it with part-time employees to fill multiple shifts. They probably going to early retirements, too. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. Let's, uh, let's look at, uh, at the next rumor. Okay, Apple, thumbs in the neutral position. Apple is pitching a set-top box to cable operators, reports Wall Street Journal. Okay, I believe I believe we've got more ups and downs. Hey, hey uh, Matthew, you believe that's true? Uh, I think... Uh, Apple will definitely uh, do something with Apple TV. They, uh, they are uh, prospecting for for what could it become uh, in the future. And of uh, what I've heard, uh, that's what they do. They are uh, searching for for partners to uh, to to make uh, streaming uh, possibilities for the Apple TV. Okay. What uh, what would an Apple TV box an Apple TV cable box, what would it offer that you can't get now through other mediums? Um, <laughs> a whole lot more than the Google Cube, for sure. <laughs> it will it will offer the, the Apple printed on it. 
That's yeah. what the, that's what all our <laughs> products are from. Retina and display and free stickers. I agree with that. Even though I want neutral. <laughs> now it'll, it'll have you have it, iTunes embedded on it, so you can watch shows, rent shows through iTunes. <laughs> you can, might even be able to use Ping if that's still on iTunes. Yeah. Right, right, right from your te- set top box. Well, actually, actually, if the, if this is true, it sounds as if uh, Apple's going to be more rooted in the streaming business. Because it's going to be Apple-owned content that they're streaming to all these cable-provided uh, television sets. So uh, I just I find that interesting. You know, I, I voted down because uh, uh, I, I believe that uh, you know Jobs uh, told uh, can't think the author of uh, Jobs autobiography now, uh, but you know he told him that he'd figured it out. He'd figured out how to make the the interface so simple. And and I'm expecting Apple to build an Apple TV. And uh, yeah, I just uh, I was kind of disappointed when I read it. I thought, sure, that's we don't need another cable box, you know. So uh, we'll do you see. Think they'll, do you think they'll move into the realm like Amazon seems to be doing, uh, into creating their own content, doing their own shows? Yes, I, I listen. I think Google's going down that path with. Uh, uh, paying these people to do YouTube, I think uh, you know Netflix is doing it, and and yes, I fully expect Apple to do it too. I mean, I, uh, you know, that's I think that's the future. I think I, I think a better way to go instead of is to allow like HBO Showtime to sell a la carte on one of their boxes out from the cable companies. So they're gonna have to. Yeah, so you can spend the you know ten two bucks a month or three dollars a month and just get HBO. Or three, whatever that is, on your internet without having cable. Oh man, that's great! You know, you, without having a, a subscription to cable, that would be wonderful. Okay. All right, I'll tell you what. This is, uh, you know, we talk about these iPhone five rumors all the time. Uh, but I, I thought I'd twist it up here a little bit. Let's let's just briefly here, guys. Let's talk about. Tell me what you think the next iPhone. It's going to look like. What, what's it going to have on it? What's it going to feature? Jeff, go go for it. It's going to look like the iPhone 4. <laughs> 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 it's going to look exactly like it. Anybody <laughs> else? No, <laughs> oh, brick. Definitely uh, bigger. Will it bigger. have go, go ahead, Matthew. Definitely bigger, faster. Um, apparently, uh, they want to change the, the the dock connector. That's not a huge issue. Um, maybe uh, we will see an innovation with a Pico projector. That could be great. Um, but uh, I'm not expecting a lot of the new iPhone. It will be simply, I hope for a new design. Like, um, I hope for an, an iPad-like design. And... Um, I hope uh, they um, they stand their ground and um, and propose a good pro- good product uh, as they usually do. Will it feature wireless charging? I I don't know. Anybody else care to? It won't look anything near as sexy as a ga- sexy as a Galaxy S three. I mean, it's getting kind of clunky looking right now. Yeah, they need it, it to sure step is. It up. Yeah, well, I- come on, big and kind of. God, it's not going to look. It's not. It's not going to have the sex. That's for sure. <laughs> I think. I think it will have wireless charging, though, to get back to the original. I mean, should hopefully, and 4G. Yeah, 4G. Well, hopefully, 4G's been something really big missing, you know. And I think, I think that's uh, really hurt uh, Apple sales these last two quarters because you have so many Android devices on the market that are LTE capable and. Uh, yeah, it's uh, it's kind of been, uh, but, you know. I, and listen, I I think uh, the consumer, the average consumer, is smarter than they used to be. Yeah. You no, know, I mean it, it. used to be they wanted an iPhone, and I think now they realize that there's more to it than, you know, what my best friend carries. So. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm, I'm I'm smiling because if it has 4G, it'll probably if you hold it wrong, you won't get 4G. <laughs> <laughs> Don't hold it upside down. Well, it, it seems like with the the iPhone that 
pe people that buy it, not to to uh, be an ass here, uh, but s some people that buy iPhones, it seems like they they have their ears covered, and then they just go with their arms, reach for the reach for the product with the Apple on, take it down from the shelf, pay whatever it costs. It's here in Denmark, it's the it's the most expensive phone at least. So. I've, uh, uh, and and, it's, I've, and I don't think it's the best. I think uh, so, so far S3 is the best. I've shown my S3 to a couple people that have iPhones, just a, a guy, uh, a friend of mine today. And when they see mine compared to theirs, they got they got handset envy. They wish they had something with a nice screen like that that was thin like that. Uh, yeah, it's a little bigger, but it, it's certainly not right. bulky in your pocket. The iPhone is kind of a chunky thing, and it looks dated to me, to be honest with you. It, it really looks, looks dated. dated. Yes. I, well, yeah. I, I think Apple's going to bring it. I really do. I think they're going to bring it. I, I think they they know they have to, uh, especially if they lose <laughs> out in <laughs> California. So, uh, but, but, you know, I, I don't think they, they, you know, even if they don't bring it, I think they're still, the sales will still go through the roof, you know, because there there's a lot of people that just like Apple, like uh, Daniel was saying, Apple products, and you know, they have a strong, loyal group of people that will buy it. You know what? My my wife, she's holding out right now. She can she can go get a new iPhone, and and she's holding out. So, uh, uh, you know, she's one of them. She's really looking forward and anticipating to what Apple's going to be bringing new. Yeah. That's a good wife. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'll tell you what. Hey guys, listen, we're gonna. Call this uh, Tech News Week history. Uh, really appreciate you guys. Uh, really enjoyed this. A lot of good discussion. And uh, looking forward to doing this again in a week. Everybody, have a great weekend. Uh, peace out, and we'll catch you guys uh, about seven days. Okay. See you now. You've been listening to Tech News Week a weekly series where we talk tech brought to you by Tech and Coffee, a Google Plus Hangout. We want to invite you to check out our Hangout. You can do so by going to techandcoffee.info and clicking on Join the Hangout, where you can find a link to our existing Hangout. You can also follow us on Twitter and Facebook at Tech and Coffee one we appreciate you joining us, and uh, y'all come back now, you hear? <laughs> <laughs>